Hey there, it's CJ Willie, and I'm cracking a pack. Today is pack number six of my Magic the Gathering Core Set 2021 bundle. The focus of the video is what is your pick? As I crack the pack, I will discuss which card would be my pack one, pick one. My viewpoint will be from a very casual Magic the Gathering player perspective. It will be a kitchen table draft, having fun with friends' opinion. So check out the preview video on my Corset 2021 bundle. I've added the link to the preview in the description below. Let's see if we've got a foil here. No foil. So, rare, three uncommons, rare, land. All right, first card out of the pack is Mind Rot, three mana, two and a black, it's sorcery. Target player discards two cards. I like Mind Rot in Limited. In a black deck, I like playing one copy of it. If you plan it correctly, it comes out of nowhere and it can grab the last two cards in your opponent's hand. Next up is Rookie Mistake, a single blue mana, instant until end of turn, target creature gets plus zero, plus two, and another target creature gets negative two, negative zero. You go into either attacks or blocks, you play this, give your creature the power increase, give their creature the power decrease, and you can win combat, save your creature, take their creature out. Next up is Daybreak Charger, two mana, one and a white, unicorn at three one. When Daybreak Charger enters the battlefield, target creature gets plus two, plus zero until end of turn. I like these two mana, three ones in white. If you're stuck playing it early on, sure, you have a three one on the board. It's a pretty good attacker and even blocker. Later on in the game, you can play it and give one of your other creatures a power boost and get through some extra damage. Next up is Goblin Arsonist, single red mana. It's a Goblin Shaman at 1-1. One, one. When Goblin Arsonist dies, you may have it deal one damage to any target. This is a great card in a black-red sacrifice deck. You can pair it with plenty of cards like Hobble Fiend, Havoc Jester. Next up is Short Sword, one generic mana, artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus one, and the equip cost is one generic mana. For one mana to play and one mana to equip, sure you give a plus one, plus one to your creature, but it doesn't really fit into any of the strategies, so it's not a card I would play in limited. Next up is Pride Malkin, three mana, two and a green. It's a cat at two one. When Pride Malkin enters the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. Each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it has trample. There are plenty of creatures in green and white that you can play on turn one or turn two. On turn three, you play Pride Malkin. Give a plus one, plus one counter to either of those earlier creatures, maybe to Pride Malkin itself. If you've set up your deck right and got lucky and drafted a Conclave Mentor, you're going to be doubling the counter on whichever creature you choose. A common card like this, giving your other creatures trample, is just added bonus. Next up is Blood Glutton, 5 mana, 4 and a black. It's a vampire at 4-3. It has Life Link. I think this card fits really well into the white-black life gain deck, where gaining 3 life gives you incremental value. Next up is Frantic Inventory. 2 mana, 1 and a blue, instant, draw a card. Then draw cards equal to the number of cards named Frantic Inventory in your graveyard. I think for 2 mana... Drawing a card is a little expensive, and with Opt already being in the set, unless you can pick up multiple copies of this card, it's something I would stay away from in Limited. Next up is Feet of Resistance, two mana, one and a white, instant. Put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. It gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. This is one of my favorite white commons. Feet of Resistance works great in not only the white-green deck, where you need counters, but it plays really well in any white deck. Comes down, protects a creature, gives that creature a plus one, plus one counter. Next up is Goblin Wizardry, four mana, three and a red. It's an instant, create two one one red Goblin Wizard creature tokens with prowess. I'm not very high on this card, even in the blue-red spells deck, this just doesn't seem to have a payoff. There's a lot of better cards to be playing 
on turn four or turn five that are going to increase the velocity of your blue-red spells deck. Next up is Garruk's Uprising, three mana, two and a green, enchantment. When Garruk's Uprising enters the battlefield, if you control a creature with power four or greater, draw a card. Creatures you control have trample. Whenever a creature with power four or greater enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. In my opinion, one of the best uncommons in Corset 2021. Because green is going to have a lot of big creatures, if you play this right, when it enters the battlefield, you're gonna draw a card. And then every creature you're playing thereafter, you're drawing a card. An enchantment that gives all your creatures trample is going to give you an advantage over your opponent because you're going to be attacking with bigger green creatures and damage is gonna get through. Our next uncommon is Meteorite, five generic mana artifact. When Meteorite enters the battlefield, it deals two damage to any target. You can tap it and add one mana of any color. I have yet to be able to find a color combination where the card has an impact. Sure, when it enters, it's going to deal two damage to any target, and then you've got a mana rock from there on out. It just seems that there are other things I'd like to be playing on turn five. Our final uncommon is Watcher of the Spheres. Two mana, so one white and one blue, the Azorius colors. It's a bird wizard at 2-2. Two -two. It has flying. Creature spells with flying you cast cost one generic less to cast. Whenever another creature with flying enters the battlefield under your control, Watcher of the Spheres gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. I like putting together white-blue flyer decks, and this is something that I would draft pack one, pick one, and then build around it with as many flyers as I possibly can. Your creatures are going to have evasion. They're going to get in for damage. Watcher of the Spheres reduces their casting cost so you can get them out quicker. All right, well, we get a cool rare or mythic rare. We have a pretty cool rare. It's Azusa Lost But Seeking. Three mana, two generic, and one green. Legendary creature, Human Monk. At one, two, you may play two additional lands on each of your turns. In limited, it's not quite the card that you want to play. It's going to be very rare that it will pay off in getting you multiple lands on the battlefield. I think it's been reprinted more for the constructed environment. But it is a pretty cool card because it has some value. It's around an $8 card, so I'm pretty happy to get it. And then we have a Rugged Highlands and a Griffin token that is a 2-2 with flying. All right, my favorite card out of the set, or best card out of the set, is Watch for the Spheres. I think it's a very impactful card in the Corset 2021 limited environment. It easily could be a pack one, pick one, in that you know you're going to be going blue-white. I think that there's plenty of blue-white flyers that are going to support Watcher of the Spheres. Not only does it help cast your flyers, by casting flyers, you're going to be able to attack with a 3-3 flyer. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did like it, please subscribe and share. Take some time to tell me in the comment section what was your favorite card or the best card out of the pack. Until next time, when I'm back to crack pack number seven in my Magic the Gathering Corset 2021 bundle in What is Your Pick?